Solving Equations Part 2. Pause, try the lesson opener. Be sure you're showing all steps, communicating mathematically. That's what's so important. And remember, this should actually be like your own pop quiz every day, checking if you're understanding the concepts. How'd you do on the pop quiz? Did you retain your skills? Let's start solving some multi-step equations. As we solve these equations, it's really important we start by cleaning up the equation. So distributing if needed, simplifying each side of the equations before we start moving things around. Then we can move the variable to one side of the equation and solve by isolating that variable using inverse operations. Let's give it a go. First example, let's distribute right off the bat. Then we wanna clean up each side of the equation. That looks good. Now I wanna move my variable to one side. Which side? Well, I've got negative two y on the left and y on the right. We see less mistakes when we can keep the coefficient on the variable positive. So I'm gonna move the two y by adding it to the right side, both sides. Then move that 17, divide by three, and I'm gonna get 19 divided by three equals y. y equals 19 thirds or six and a third. Improper fractions are easier for us to work with. So unless we have a reason to change it to mixed, we're gonna keep them improper. Next example. I think you probably have this one. Clean it up first. No distribution, but I do have some like terms. 7x minus 4x, that's 3x. And then on the right side of the equal sign, I have 12 minus 8, that's 4. So important to combine like terms before we start solving. Move my x's to one side, what happens? 3x minus 3x, that's zero, right? So six equals four. Well, that's never true. So no solution. Okay, I really warmed up with you on those first two. What about the third one? What do you think you'd do first? And then what would you do? Pause, try. Well, look at that. My variable subtracted out. So is it just no solution again? Hmm, negative 12 equals negative 12. That's actually always true. So that means for any real number for n, this equation's true infinitely many solutions. Now it's your turn to try. Be sure and show every single step. Don't do anything in your head, show it on paper. Okay, as you check your work, be sure and check every line of your work and do them in the order that we're doing them. We know what helps students to be successful moving on beyond this section and beyond this class. So just know that we're trying to give you the best strategies to be successful in math. We know when an equation has no solution or infinitely many solutions. We've seen a few examples, but I want you to go ahead and put it down on paper in words. Writing things down or saying them out loud in words helps us to remember. So pause, write down your way of remembering. Really seems like we have equations down, but can you solve an inequality? Inequality, that's the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Remember, less than points left. We solve inequalities just like we solve equations. So if I'm solving for x, I'm gonna add that seven first to both sides, get five x is greater than negative 11 and divide by five. X is greater than negative 11 fifths. Try the next one. Don't worry about the fraction. It works out quite nice. Did you make it this far? What would I need to do next here? Divide by negative seven. Anybody have alarms going off like I do? Oh, for inequalities, if we multiply or divide by negative numbers, we have to flip the inequality sign. So when I divide by negative seven on both sides, I'll get X is greater than or equal to negative two sevenths. No number. No number. <laughs> we got it. We got a gander. 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 gander.